Tonight, anger and outrage after an Illinois judge decided to reverse his own decision in the sexual assault conviction of an 18-year-old at his sentencing hearing, now saying the 148 days he spent behind bars is, quote, plenty of punishment, and ruling the court will find him not guilty on all counts. What's going on with Illinois? You got the most corrupt mayor I've ever came across. You got a judge trying to kick Trump off the Republican ballot. You got Chicago Mayor Brandon Johnson complaining about migrants, although he supported sanctuary cities. Now he wants help with his liberal policies. Speaking of liberal policies, it's starting to look like Illinois is becoming a lawless state. And now you can apparently just go around and women and get off. Let's talk about it. Drew Clinton, 18, was convicted of indulging in Harvey Weinstein-like extracurricular activities on Cameron Vaughn, a 16-year-old high schooler. According to Cameron Vaughn, Drew Clinton essayed her while she was passed out after an epic night of drinking, partying, stripping down to their undergarments to risk their lives drinking and swimming. Like, did you know that in 2023, 281 people drowned to death, 80% of them being males? Damn, we're dumb. Get ready for its coldest strawman argument. And that's an epidemic. Think about it. 282 black people were gunned down by police officers last year. That's a lot. No other race in America gets gunned down like... Well... The rate of police shootings of black Americans is much higher than any other ethnicity at 5.9 per million people versus white people who stand at 2.3 per million. Boom. You're welcome, libs. You owe me a thumbs up for that one. But don't use that data to actually debate anyone that has skills like Ben Shapiro. This is the thing you cannot say on the left. While the left claims they want to reach out to all of us, they don't actually want to reach out to all of us. They prefer to call everybody on this side of the aisle, a Nazi and a racist and a terrible person, and then castigate us for our immorality. It makes it very comfortable for them to, to push crappy policy. And you never have to justify your policy if the guy on the other side's a Nazi. You, you'll get destroyed. It's all about how you perceive the numbers. It's how you perceive it. Okay, enough of the crowd work. I'm just trying to loosen you guys up a little bit because we're about to go down this dark path of teenage rape. So without mansplaining, whatever that means, Can I go? Um, let me let the victim explain to you what happened to her on everyone's favorite exploitation show, Dr. Phil. Speaking of Dr. Phil, I was lucky enough to get in touch with him, and he linked me up with today's sponsor, Turnabout Ranch, a ranch that takes troubled teens and teaches them values of faith and respect through torture, sexual assault, and murder. What? What the fuck? I got sexually assaulted, and I have not been able to move on from what happened to me. My friends and I made the plan to go to this graduation party. When we got there, there was this guy named Drew. One of Drew's friends came up to me, and he was asking if I would ever hook up with Drew. And I told him no. I was drinking. None of us were of age. There was a pool. Everyone started getting in there. When I got to my friend's house, I remember laying down and then everything just went black from there. I woke up. I couldn't breathe. I could feel a hand on my hip and another one pressing the pillow up on my face. I told him to stop two or three times and he just wouldn't. I had to take my hands and physically push him up so I could roll myself onto the ground. I noticed it was Drew because he jumped right up, pulled his pants up, and just started playing video games as if he didn't just do anything. See, this is horrific. And according to her, the, the DNA was all over her. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean it was DNA retrieved from her. <laughs> but it does show that he was all over her, potentially kissing, licking, touching her, and etc. You'd be surprised what you can retrieve from DNA. It is crazy. Not that I've ever was involved in anything like that. I'm just saying. At first, I didn't even want to tell my parents. I was too scared for them to find out that I was out where I shouldn't have been and that I was doing stuff I shouldn't have been doing. But right after I did, they were like, we're going to take this to the police. 
And I knew not to shower or anything so that we had all the DNA evidence we needed. Thank God she did that because too many cases involve women who do nothing after a situation like that. Washing away evidence, waiting too long until it's too late due to the statute of limitation in some states, or just pure embarrassment to being in a bad situation to begin with. So I'm glad that she went to her dad and then reported it to the police. So she took all the proper steps and Drew Clinton was arrested and charged with criminal sexual assault. You see, the word R... Letter of the day. You know, the rape doesn't exist in Illinois. Since hurting criminals' feelings is bad, but lawlessness is good. But criminal sexual assault in Illinois includes sexual penetration with force and without consent. You know, by the way, this annoys the hell out of me. I hate that the media does this. This is Drew Clinton. That's a photo of him. You see? See, they dig up all of the photos to show you how innocent and non-threatening Clinton looks. To you, to feed the narrative. You see, this photo of Drew... It's probably a photo of him at 13 or 14 years old. The level of propaganda within the American media is just ridiculous. Honestly, blame Edward Barnet. That f***ing guy comes up in every single research that I do when it comes down to figuring out why we are the way we are. You can never trust the media anymore these days, and that's why I like using Ground.News, my sponsor for today's episode. Are you tired of sifting through biased news reports? Well, with Ground News, you'll unravel the truth behind news outlets reporting biases. Our innovative platform not only reveals the leaning of various news sources, but also provides in-depth insight into the political affiliations, as well as the blind spot showing you what you may be missing from the other side due to political leaning. It also shows you how full of some of these articles are by leaving out crucial information. I use Ground News for this episode, so if you're ready to wake up, check out Ground News in the link in the description below. Back to the case. Judge Robert Adrian presided over the trial. He was the same judge that presided over the family feud murder. Yeah, this town basically is... Had some bad luck. The investigation and three-day bench trial were swift, with 8th Judicial Circuit Court Judge Robert Adrian convicting then-18-year-old Drew Clinton of criminal sexual assault. The charge carried a minimum sentence, four years in prison. But this isn't where the crazy twist comes into play. Despite the conviction, Judge Adrian reversed the decision during Clinton's sentencing hearing. And welcome back to GMA. We want to get right to our GMA cover story this morning. The growing outrage after an Illinois judge overturned a teen's rape conviction. Alex Perez spoke with a victim and her father, and he is joining us now from Chicago. Good morning, Alex. Hey, good morning, Cecilia. Cameron Vaughn says it was difficult for her to come forward and tell her story. She was in disbelief when she learned the judge's decision. An Illinois judge is under fire for reversing his own conviction of a man who was found guilty of sexually assaulting 16-year-old Cameron Vaughn. The judge made me feel like I fought for nothing. Vaughn says she was drunk when 18-year-old Drew Clinton allegedly raped her at a graduation party in Quincy, Illinois last May. Her dad by her side when they learned the conviction was reversed. It felt like Cameron was making strides to get to get past it. And now it's like the scab's been reopened and she's, you know, has to go through this all again. Like, how do you find someone guilty for a crime and then just have a change of heart? And worst part is he justified all of this by blaming the victim. This young lady um, actually brought alcohol into the party, gave it to um, different people. And I thought it was the parents who had the party's responsibility to actually watch over the kid. They're the ones who are the response, who have the responsibility here. They're the ones that are supposed to be safe keeping the kids. Instead, they're providing liquor to them, they're letting them do whatever they want. All right, so that's a lot to unpack. All right, so basically, because she got drunk, her punishment should be more than a hangover or scolding by the parents or maybe a night in county jail. No, she should get raped. Mr. Clinton has served almost five months in the county jail, Illinois Judge Robert Adrian said last week. For what happened in this case, that is plenty of punishment. Cameron's name and image were kept private due to her age and the nature of the alleged crime. But now she has bravely decided to waive anonymity and speak out. Once I heard him say that he's going to be walking free, I just lost my breath, I guess, and I had to leave the 
courtroom because I could not stop crying. I just feel disrespect. I fully understand the issue with the situation, and he is right. Everyone was breaking the law on a moral basis and on a legal basis. Children should not have been drinking, and parents should not have permitted underage drinking or hosted parties where alcohol was provided. If the adults indeed facilitated these circumstances, they should face charges for misdemeanor or criminal negligence. However, blaming the victim is literally ludicrous. Boy, have you lost your mind because I'll help you find it. While she made choices that contributed to the situation, justifying rape as a consequence or punishment is reprehensible and has caused some serious outrage within the community and, of course, the victim. To be clear, the judge never said she deserved it. It's just kind of implied by his justification. Nevertheless, enough attention was put on this case that Illinois' court commission made a decision on what should happen to the judge. We're back now with the legal firestorm in Illinois. A judge removed from the bench after reversing his own verdict in a sexual assault case. Our Maggie Vespa asked the judge why he did it and has the exclusive on-camera reaction from the alleged victim to his removal. Today, Judge Adrian stands by his reversal, now saying he did it after revisiting the evidence. Once I did that, I saw that I'd made a mistake. I didn't explain my not guilty ruling because in order to do that, I would have had to say, well, I didn't believe her. She, You don't she, believe her. Yes, I didn't believe her. I would have had to say that in court. I didn't want to say that. She's a minor. The oversight board not buying it, writing Adrian intentionally subverted the law and then lied about it under oath to serve his own interests, adding they don't accept his contention that he made a mistake in finding Clinton guilty. This fight became about the judge. Yeah. Cammy, I mean, now 18, maintains she was assaulted. The commission said you lied. Are they I wrong? Said, they are wrong. Okay. They're totally wrong. If they would have looked at the evidence in the case, then they would have seen that he was not guilty. But they didn't want to do that because they knew they'd be facing the mob that I've been facing the whole time, and they didn't want to do that. So it's simpler just to sacrifice a poor judge. You feel like you were sacrificed? I do. Clinton declined comment for this story, but through his attorney, still maintains his innocence. That dude did it. Clearly did it. Okay, his name is Clinton. I mean, do you need anything else? His name is Clinton. I'm just kidding. I don't need a defamation lawsuit, okay? Too many YouTubers are getting sued out here these days. But as for Drew Clinton, well... Here's what happened to him. An update tonight in a local case that gained international attention. You might remember Drew Clinton. He was convicted of sexual assault in 2021. But then Adams County Judge Robert Adrian reversed that conviction. Clinton tried to get his record expunged, but today Adams County Judge Roger Thompson denied that request. For Cammie, now a high school graduate and still grappling with nightmares, Finally winning played. one fight helps. Is this a form of justice? Yes, to me it is. He does not deserve that power over people. So yeah, this was an interesting criminal case, and I'm curious what your thoughts are on this crime. Was justice served? Did something good come out of this situation? The rapist is free. The judge is essentially on mandatory paid vacation. Cameron is moving on with her life. I mean, I guess the sex offender registry list is a win. Regardless, this entire situation should honestly give you a glimpse into why you shouldn't underage drink and why you shouldn't abuse alcohol to the point where you just pass out. <laughs> I've been there. I've done that. Trust me, it is never fun. The aftermath is never fun. Because if you get drunk around the wrong people... They end up calling you daddy. Man, you doing it, man. You deserve it, daddy. You putting in that work. Proud of you. I love you. Yeah. The next thing you know, you're online trying to defend your reputation. Still, he just continued to tweet and tweet and tweet and tweet and tweet. Jesus Christ, Meek, please just stop. If you like weird cases like these, check out my video on Ashton Kutcher murder trial or Vince McMahon's sex scandal or teen mom that throws her baby away. I got some videos for everyone. Politics to pop culture. That's my channel. Oh, and I guess crime? <laughs>